All right, welcome back. This is video part two of timing. In the last video, we showed you how to check the timing and- Spark timing. Spark timing, of course. And now we're gonna show you how to fine tune or adjust that timing if it's off, you know, within one degree, one and a half degrees. Okay, go ahead, James. The, okay, USAC says that you can run an air gap of maximum 35 thousandths. This can be uh, set with feeler gauges. So I have my two feeler gauges here. Max, they're kind of worn, I use them a lot. 35 thousandths right. on the coil leg. So what that means is we have this flywheel when the coil passes the magnet, it makes a spark and ignites the fuel, and that's how the engine runs. USAC is saying that if you put your feeler gauge right here and you put that on there, that's the maximum distance that you can be away from the flywheel which is 35 thousandths, but the surface is kind of arced. So what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of a hokey measurement. They should be measuring it right at the end. That would be an accurate measurement. But it says that this 35 thousand gauge can pass through both legs, both arcs, which is probably gonna make it about 50 thousandths. Right, that's huge. Okay, so now, if the coil's here, the engine is retarded. The spark timing is retarded. If the coil is closer to this magnet, it advances the spark timing and makes the car faster. Slower, faster. So the closest, closer it is, faster cars. Correct. And you can fine tune, fine tune this off of the flywheel, but by the rules, you can't go higher than 35 thousandths. But I could go three thousandths if I wanted. Correct, off. there's no minimum. But sometimes the flywheels aren't machined exactly perfect and the flywheel will rub when you spin it if you get it too close to the, um, the flywheel. But it won't hurt anything. It'll just rub until it wears a mark in it and it wears itself in. Won't hurt anything. Okay, so let's move on to one other topic. This coil is bolted to the engine. These are the screws that hold the coil to the engine. This screw measures 206 thousandths. The hole in the coil measures 250 thousandths. Okay, so six from 50 is 46 thousandths. So you can push the coil this way on the bolts and you're gonna advance the timing. If you pull it back this way, you're gonna retard the timing. I haven't found this to be very effective. It's more effective of lifting it up or putting it close. So let's see how effective it is because we timed this engine earlier and it was 17 and 1 tenth. Yeah, 17.1. 17.1. Are you gonna spin it right now? And we'll spin it to check it, and then we'll move that coil down and see what it does. Right here, we're at 17 degrees.
just a titch over. At 1200 RPM, which is 100% legal. Need a 10 millimeter wrench. It's almost too legal for all this talk about being a half degree over and so this this engine is legal legal so he's loosening up the bolts on the coil because there was a gap in the coil and now he's going to drop the coil down as close to the flywheel as he can get it with, with my feeler gauges, we'll set it a safe distance of eight. It's eight thousandths of an inch. If anybody knows what eight thousandths of an inch is, a human hair measures about two thousandths. Unless it's a red hair, it's a little thicker. There's a joke about that, but we won't get into it. All right, so you're finding two feeler gauges can you, so you can do both sides at once. Correct. One side in there. Right under the leg. Now you're tightening the bolts while the feeler gauge is under there. You don't want to hit your pointer and disturb that. Yeah, if you hit your pointer, you're done. You got to start all over. Just to find top dead center, not a big deal. Okay, my feeler gauges are sitting in there by themselves. I can pull them out. That one's a little tighter. That's a tight 8,000. Okay, now we're going to spin the motor and we're gonna see where we're at. Remember, we were at a dead on 17 or 17.1. Now we just increased the timing a whole degree by moving that magnet. What's that degree of timing worth on the racetrack? Um, it's probably worth four tenths of a second. That's huge. So that half a degree has to be worth two tenths, tenth and a half? Not a tenth, uh, a hundredth. Oh, four one hundredths. Four one hundredths. Four one hundredths. I'll take it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you if we push that coil all the way forward, what that does. Because now you're combining two events. You're going down and you're going forward. This is where you need four fingers. Here, hold the end of this. Okay, so I'm rotating it forward and pushing it down the same eight thousandths. And some of this is new for me because I really don't care about that because I'm just trying to achieve my desired um, exact timing. So you can move it forward, pull it back. Yeah, let's see what it does. But I like the up and down better. So right there we got Another half a degree of timing and pushing it forward and 
we're putting it as low as we could, could be. So in conclusion, even if you got a motor from anybody you got it from, you can increase the timing a de degree and a half just by loosening that coil and moving it around. Correct? Correct. So the more, the more knowledge you have, the more power you have. Power on. Stay tuned for our next video on timing keys. That one's going to be a fun one.